Welcome to St. John's for worship. I'm glad you have tuned in and you have joined us for this special time together. This morning we will continue to hear from a variety of narratives and stories. I hope that you tuned in and you saw Michelle Alvarado uh, tell the story of Mr. Rabbit and his Thanksgiving meal. There's lots, to, lots going on right now. We are open on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Last week was our first week to be open. And it was, even though it wasn't typical worship, it was very worshipful. We came in and we heard some scripture. We prayed together. We opened up and we just shared our hearts with what's going on. So if you're interested in doing that with us, please come and join us at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. So if you are an early riser and you've already watched this, come on down to the church and join us for some special time together in community. Also, we have a Bible study, Fusion Bible study going on on Thursday evenings on Zoom. I invite you to that as well. It is at 6 p.m. on Thursday evenings. If you want to know how to do Zoom, like it seems intimidating, just reach out to us at the church, the staff. We will walk you through it, and you'll find that it is very easy to um, get on to Zoom. For now, I want to thank you again for joining us. Let's turn our hearts to the one who loves us like no other, the one true God. Let us worship together.
Welcome to a time of offering and a time of prayer. Uh, the office, the staff, uh, those that are uh, working in ministry for St. John's are so very, so very happy and glad that you continue to support the ministry of this church and the ways that we can reach out to people. Currently, our our most used way is to reach out uh, via the internet and via YouTube and via our Facebook page. And we are making an impact. Uh, for those of you that aren't tuned into Facebook, you need to know that there are people who are commenting, people who are liking and loving our pages, people who indicate that they're watching and receiving the messages of devotions and of, of ministry and of worship. Uh, we have regular members, we have regular attenders, we have former members, we have people of the community, all of which who have tuned in to listen to the ministries of this church. And so we very much appreciate the way that you have supported those. Uh, people comment and say that that was a calming message or it was a beautiful message or they loved the music or that really touched me today. So I wanted you to know by your, by your presence, by your support, by your encouraging word, and certainly by your financial support, you are supporting the ministries of the church, and they are touching lives. And so we ask you and, and invite you to continue to do so, either by sending a check in the mail or by uh, bank draft or by online support, or certainly by using the mobile app. All of those are ways to, to send your support, your financial support to the church, which is so fabulous, and we thank you so much for the ways that you're doing that. And so now we turn to a time of prayer. So I encourage you to sit quietly in your space, to breathe in slowly and to breathe out slowly, and to, to sit in the presence of God as we pray. Gracious and holy God, today we offer you praise and thanksgiving for your many blessings. We invite you to come and sit with us as we worship you today. Surround us with your loving presence as we lift our voices in song and prayer. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to your Holy Spirit as we hear your word read and proclaimed. And help us to listen and respond to your presence in this worship service today. God of grace and mercy, we are so amazed that you love us like you do. We are amazed that you desire to have a relationship with us. And we are grateful that you accept us just the way we are. And then love us enough to change us into the people you have called us and created us to be. Oh God, help us to accept your teaching, your molding, your wisdom, and your guidance. Forgive us when we hang on to our old ways. Point us in the direction of Jesus. And give us courage to become more like Christ. Open our eyes to see others as your beloved children as well. 
Open our ears to listen to their stories. Shift our thinking. Change our perspective. Help us to see beyond our own world and into the lives of other people. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Fill us with the compassion that comes from you. Show us what is ours to do, what is ours to say, so that we might extend your love and grace, so that we might share your compassion and your forgiveness to those people around us. Move us to act in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. God of hope, We ask that you be present in the lives of those who are in great distress today. Pour out your peace and your comfort and your grace and your love on those that are in such great pain. Be with those who grieve this day. Be hope for those who are in despair. Be light for those who have lost their way. Be love for those who feel like they've been abandoned. Heal those who are sick in body or spirit. Grant your discernment and wisdom to those who are leading your church, gracious God. Guide them in this time of so much change. And Lord, in these few moments, we also lift up those prayer requests from people that are closest to us. So as we move into just a time, a moment or two of silence, Lord, we lift up, we sit right where we are, and we lift up the names of people who are dear to us and ask you to intervene. God, we are so grateful that we know that you have heard these prayers. And we know that you are already at work in every one of the situations we named. For we place our trust and confidence in you as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, our scripture today comes from Exodus chapter 2 starting with verse 1. Again, we will be looking at a familiar story that many of us have heard um, through childhood, but if this is the first time you've heard it or you've heard this story uh, many times before, may the word of the Lord fall afresh on your ears this day. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, 
I drew him out of the water. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today, we are going to look at stories about compassion. Moses, the birth of Moses happened at a time when the Israelites were extremely persecuted. Persecuted by a Pharaoh who was afraid of Uh, the growth of the Israelites, that they were going to outnumber the Egyptians. So in order to control the population, the Pharaoh decided to kill all the newborn baby boys. It was a horrific time for the people of Israel. Not only were they enslaved by Egypt, but now this horrible wailing was coming out of their community. When Moses was born, his mom hid him for as long as she could. I cannot imagine her heartache, her heartbeat beating out of her chest every time her little boy made a noise. Can you imagine hearing soldiers go down your street and you hide your son in the cabinets or in the drawers or wherever you can, praying to God that he doesn't make a sound? And when it came to the time where she could hide him no longer, she built a little basket and made it to where it would float down the river. Talk about a situation that was completely out of your control. So she went down to the river with her very precious cargo and set him afloat. And down the river he went to where the princess of that same pharaoh was bathing. Now you know this princess knew exactly what was going on in Egypt, knew exactly what was going on among the Israelite people. And here comes this little basket, and she asks one of the servants to go fetch it for her. And there is the little baby. Her heart must have melted with compassion. For it, wasn't, it didn't take her but a moment to decide that she wanted to raise this child as her own. And the sister of Moses came out of hiding and said, do you want some help? I know a nursemaid that can nurse that child for you until he comes of age. And that is exactly how it happened. That very moment of compassion changed the trajectory of what was going to happen to the Israelites in Egypt. For Moses grew in Pharaoh's court, but he grew to also love his people. And there was a time Moses was standing at a burning bush, and he was sent back to set those same people free, for we serve a God of compassion. God heard the cry of the Egyptian people and responded, with that same kind of compassion that beat in the heart of Pharaoh's daughter the moment that Moses floated down that river right into her life. There are so many stories of compassion. Jesus shared a very powerful story of compassion called the Good Samaritan. In that story, he talks about a... Um, a Jewish man going down the road, but it was a dangerous road, and there were robbers, and there were thieves. And he was attacked, and he was brutally beaten, and he was robbed. Along that same path came people you would have thought would have had compassion for him and would have helped. They were people with power and people with authority, and they were also his people. But instead of lending a hand and helping, they moved to the other side of the road because they did not want to get involved. They were apathetic to his plight. Their hearts were hard. But then came along the most unassuming and unsuspected hero, a Samaritan. Now, if you read the Bible very closely, you get the picture that Samaritans and Jews did not get along. They um, did not share meals together. 
They lived in different places. They stayed segregated. If they came across the same path, one of them would cross the street so they would not get close to one another. But here comes the Samaritan who sees this Jew beaten and bloodied with nothing on the side of the road, and he gathers the man up, puts him on his donkey, and takes him back into town. He drops him off at an inn and gives the innkeeper enough funding to be able to take care of the man because he had compassion. Even though there was this disparity between their two people, he was moved by what had happened to him. Compassion takes its stand with others in their distress. Compassion takes its stand with others in their distress. Earlier in the week, you heard the story of Mr. Rabbit and his Thanksgiving meal, which Michelle Alvarado read perfectly for you. It's a beautiful story of a rabbit who is blessed enough to go into the farmer's garden and collect as much food as he wants. And when he gets home and he organizes all his food and he's eating a snack on his porch, his friends begin to walk by and they're cold and they're hungry and they're kind of cranky and grumpy and he doesn't click even though they tell him point blank, well, I'm hungry or I'm cold. It doesn't hit him how blessed he is until he goes back into his house and he sees his blessings all laid out and organized and it finally hits him. He has moved to compassion to make a difference with his friends. There are so many stories of compassion. And I think one of the stories that uh, shows this in a very powerful way is the story of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. In this story, at the very beginning, um, we find Scrooge. We hear about his character. He's stingy. He loves his money. Um, and he's putting everything into his business that he can, and he has given up so much in his life for his business. And he begins to be visited by ghosts, but the very first one that he is visited by is Jacob Marley. It was his business partner. And Jacob is there to warn him about his life, about his cold heart. And in the middle of that conversation... Scrooge, Ebenezer, tries to defend how he feels. And he says, but you were always a good man of business, Jacob, faltered Scrooge, who now began to apply this to himself. Business, cried the ghost, wringing its hands again, Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Compassion is the way that we show love for one another. We get caught up in our own daily lives. We get absorbed in our own life. And it blinds us to see the world around us. Right now, our blinders are being taken off. We hear a huge outcry in various ways, um, in various places, by various individuals. The question is, are we hearing these stories with a heart of compassion? Or do we feel threatened by these stories? Or do these stories make us angry? How are we responding to these stories? When the Israelites were out in the wilderness, one of the things that God promised them was, I will take your hearts of stone, and I will give you tender hearts of compassion. 
And throughout the Old Testament, God says this over and over and over again. Can we hear individual stories with a heart of compassion? There's a reason that we're handed down these stories from generation to generation so that we learn how to be compassionate, that we practice with a listening ear and that it reaches down into our heart. The scripture tells us where love is, God is, and compassion is an expression of God's love. How are we expressing that here, now, today, in the midst of so much strife? As a follower of Christ, help, I pray that God helps us to hear with his own heart to help us sort all of this out. For there is so much emotion and different kinds of emotion that we're able to walk through this and come out on the other side of it, all of us, better people in a better society. That walking through COVID and the things that we're sacrificing, the things that have changed us, brings us to be better people. That through our conversations and the stories that we're hearing about race relations, all of it, every story, that we hear it with a heart of compassion and that we're able to move forward together. Narrative is so very powerful if we're willing to listen. And it gives us the opportunity to respond with the heart of Christ. So your homework this week is possibly to have conversations of people who might have a different perspective than you or a different life experience than you. Can you hear their life experience with a heart of compassion without jumping to judgment? Can you hear their narrative, their life story, and that it is transformative for both of you as they, as they hear it, they tell it, and you hear it. And can they do the same for you? Can you share your perspective in all honesty, your narrative, and it be heard with a heart of compassion? Compassion is a part of who we are. It's a fruit of the Spirit, also known as kindness. It is God's love expressed through every single one of us. May that love be a part of each one of our daily lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you like. I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. I know searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I Perfect in all of your ways You are perfect
As we close this worship service, I want to uh, extend the peace of Christ to you and the compassion of God to you. That may it flow through your heart that as we travel through the year 2020, which has been so very interesting, that our hearts are being changed, that our eyes are being open, that our ears hear new things, and that we see Christ and we become Christ. That is my prayer for you. May the love and peace of Christ be in your home this day. Amen. Think, says, siete. That one might have been Spanish. Am I ready? I don't either. You just start talking and hope God does it. <laughs> That's how that works.